What if I told you there were a few overlooked aspects that could completely transform the financial future of your agency? Imagine putting in all the hard work, delivering excellent results, and still not seeing the profits that your agency deserves. Frustrating, right? It might shock you, but something as common as mismanaged scope can bleed your resources dry, leaving you wondering where all the hard work went. And guess what? This is just the tip of the iceberg. In this video, I'm going to break down the common pitfalls that drag agencies down and reveal the silent profit killers that can keep good agencies from making great money. More importantly, I'll show you how you can easily sidestep these traps to keep your agency profitable using proven templates and models. Having gone through these challenges myself, navigating them alone can be tricky, but today I'll share with you what really works. These tactics are easy to implement and trusted by top agencies and validated by our experience in working with over 60,000 agencies. Let's get into it. Trap one, scope creep. Scope creep happens when a client asks you to do more than what was originally agreed upon. Basically, it's anything that you or your agency would consider out of scope. There may be some requests from a client that you can let slide at your discretion, but be cautious because it can be a slippery slope. Set dangerous precedents and wind up being death by a thousand cuts when it comes to your profits. Let's imagine or pretend that you're a web agency and a client hires you to design, build, and launch a new five-page website. After delivering the initial websites, the client requests three additional pages, bringing the total to eight. Now, maybe you can accommodate two of these new pages by using the same template as one of the initially agreed upon pages, but the third page requires more custom development. That's a simple example of scope creep. It's virtually inescapable for most agencies, expect it to happen, but what you do after matters the most. When a client requests work beyond the originally agreed upon scope, it's important to charge for the extra work. These additional tasks not only require more of your time and resources, but can also extend the project's timeline, potentially delaying work with other profitable clients. This delay and the diversion of your resources are what we refer to as an opportunity cost. Essentially, by taking on extra work without proper compensation, you're missing out on the potential revenue and growth that could come from other opportunities. And this here is a really simple and popular visual that expresses opportunity cost. I want you to take a moment to screenshot this and really think through how you spend your time when deciding the projects to take on your agency or what tasks you assign throughout your team. Ensuring that you are compensated fairly for any extra work helps protect your business's profitability and allows you to allocate your time and resources efficiently. One of the most challenging aspects of opportunity cost is that it can be difficult to quantify. Unlike direct costs, opportunity costs often don't have a clear monetary value attached, making them easy to overlook. For example, the time and effort spent on additional tasks for one client might mean less time available for acquiring new clients or completing other projects, which could have brought in more revenue. The hidden nature of opportunity cost can make it a silent drain on your resources and profitability. It's crucial to be mindful of this and to assess the potential impact of taking on extra work against the benefits it might bring, ensuring you make informed decisions that align with your business goals. Now, luckily, the easy solution to avoiding all of this is implementing a well-defined statement of work or SOW before any client engagement kicks off. An SOW is a formal document that outlines the specifics of a project, including the services to be provided, deliverables, timelines, and costs. In a digital agency, the SOW serves as a contract that sets clear boundaries and expectations for both the client and the agency. It acts as a safeguard against scope creep by clearly defining what's included and what isn't in a project. By having a comprehensive SOW, you can ensure that both your team and the client are aligned on the project's scope from the outset. This document should detail every aspect of the work, including the number of pages on the website, the specific features, functionalities, and any other additional services like SEO or content and web page copy creation. It should also outline the process for handling changes or additional requests, including how these will be built and how they might impact the timeline. And on the sales side, the SOW is an essential tool during negotiations with the client because it helps in clearly communicating what is covered under the agreed upon terms and what would constitute extra work. This clarity helps manage client expectations and reduces the likelihood of disagreements later on. 
On the performance side, the SOW serves as a guideline for delivering the project. It ensures that everyone involved understands the project's scopes and the deliverables required. If the client requests something beyond the agreed scope, the team can refer to the SOW to clarify whether the request is covered or if it requires additional changes. Including a change request process in the SOW is crucial. This process should specify how any changes in the project scope will be handled, including obtaining client approval, adjusting the timeline, and applying additional costs if necessary. So by establishing this process up front, you can avoid misunderstandings and ensure that any extra work your agency takes on is compensated fairly. Regular communication with the client, as outlined in the SOW, is also important. This includes schedule check-ins, progress reports, and meetings to discuss any potential changes or concerns. Keeping the client informed throughout the project helps in maintaining a positive relationship and prevents scope creep from becoming a source of conflict. Now, some of you might be wondering, I use a proposal to scope the project, so why would I need an SOW? Now, a proposal is a great initial document that provides an overview and estimated costs. However, it often lacks the detailed specifications needed to manage projects. An SOW goes beyond the proposal by serving as a legally binding document that clearly outlines every aspect of the project, ensuring all parties have a mutual understanding and agreement on the work to be done. This is especially crucial as your agency grows and you begin managing more and more clients and larger teams. While a one-person shop might manage client expectations informally, scaling up with more employees introduces the risk of team members agreeing to client requests outside the original scope, sometimes without the knowledge of the agency owner. Now, this can lead to a lot of unmet expectations, and most terrifyingly, your agency might be doing free work that you aren't even aware of. So that's why, ultimately, a well-crafted SOW is not just a protective measure for your agency, it also ensures a smoother and more transparent experience for your clients. So by clearly defining the project scope and expectations, you can deliver projects on time and within budget, while also preserving the profitability of your agency. I want to make this even easier for you, so I have crafted a comprehensive SOW template that you can customize to fit your specific needs and use with your clients. This template includes all the essential sections we've discussed, such as project scope, deliverables, timelines, and a change request process. You can find a link to the SOW template in the description below. However, a final word on this topic, and please trust me when I say this, if you're in your agency or you have a relatively new team, you as the agency owner should insist that your team brings scope creep requests directly to you so that you're kept in the loop and you can coach them on how to manage these scope creep requests and build them properly. Do not let them throw in free stuff for clients without talking to you first. Profit killer number two, chasing the wrong leads. Imagine you're stranded in a vast desert, the sun blazing down and you're desperate for water. Suddenly in the distance, you see an oasis, lush trees, a glistening pool of water. It looks like salvation. Your heart races and you push forward with all your might only to find when you get there that it was all just a mirage, an illusion. This is what it's like when you're chasing the wrong leads in your agency, an enticing illusion that never materializes. The allure of these seemingly attractive leads can be overwhelming. They promise big opportunities, glittering with potential. The excitement can cloud your judgment, making you overlook critical red flags. You find yourself thinking, this could be the client that changes everything but not all that glitters is gold. Some leads may appear valuable on the surface, but pursuing them will only lead you down a path of chasing illusions, like never reaching a closed deal. Chasing the wrong leads isn't just a waste of time, it can also be a significant drain on your agency's resources. Every moment spent nurturing these dead-end prospects is time taken away from pursuing more viable opportunities. You must recognize these costs and refocus your efforts on prospects that have the highest chances of converting into a new client. As agency owners, we're always trying to strike that balance between doing the work for clients and investing time and resources to get new clients. It's a challenge that I personally struggle with. So I run my own agency where I write and edit content and I've got two writers that I train and manage. So it takes me a lot of time to do all of that performance stuff. 
On top of that, I'm responsible for finding new clients and handling all the sales calls and follow-ups and client reporting. Now, nothing irks me more than a lead who's unresponsive or gives me the runaround because the time I spend on chasing leads is valuable time that's taken away from fulfilling client deliverables. So what I've done is become very strict about my lead qualification process and built an interactive tool that considers factors including budget, authority, need, and timing, among others. And that's really helped me refine who I talk to and gives me a set of indicators around whether this lead is a waste of time or not. I would love to share this free interactive tool with you. If it's something you're interested in, please drop a comment below and I'll film a whole episode on it. Now, let's talk about how to recognize when you're chasing the wrong lead. There are prospects that despite showing some initial interest, don't align with your ideal client profile. They may lack the budget, have unrealistic expectations, or simply aren't a good fit for the services your agency provides. And it's important to identify these red flags early on, allowing you to disqualify them as early as possible and focus on more promising prospects. For example, if you're an SEO agency and a prospect expects immediate results in a competitive market without a proper budget, that's a clear sign they may not be the right fit. It's important to communicate directly and set clear expectations from the start. So you could say in the email, to ensure we can meet your goals, our typical clients invest a specific amount in SEO over a certain time period. Does this align with your budget and expectations? Now, what if you've already had a few meetings and the lead seems promising, but they keep delaying their decision? You might find yourself in a situation where they're perpetually two weeks away from being two weeks away from signing a contract, and this can be incredibly frustrating and a massive time sink. In these cases, it's essential to communicate clearly and directly. For example, you could send an email saying, hey, we've discussed your project goals and I'm excited to work together. To ensure we can start delivering value, can we finalize the agreement by X date? This will help us align our schedules and resources accordingly. Sometimes you need to ask probing questions to uncover any underlying issues. You might say, hey, I understand decisions like this involve multiple factors. Is there anything specific that's causing delays or are there any concerns we can address? If budget or scope is a concern, offering a smaller phased engagement can be a good compromise. For example, you could suggest starting with a pilot project. If the full project is too much to commit to right now, how about we start with a pilot phase? This will allow you to see the value we bring and make a more informed decision about scaling up. Setting a deadline is also crucial. You can politely but firmly say, to plan our resources effectively, we need to finalize our engagement by X date. This ensures we can meet your needs and timelines efficiently. If the prospect continues to delay, it's okay to provide them with an easy way out. This can be as simple as saying, if now isn't the right time, we completely understand. Please feel free to let us know and we can revisit the conversation when it fits better with your schedule. Lastly, maintaining professionalism is key. If you decide to stop pursuing a lead, leave the door open for future opportunities. If we don't reach a decision by X date, let's touch base again in the future. We're always here if you have any questions or are ready to move forward. Remember, focusing on the right leads is not just about avoiding time wasters, it's about protecting your agency's resources and ensuring you're working with clients who truly value what you offer. This way, you can build a more stable and profitable business rather than constantly chasing prospects who will never convert. Let's move on to profit killer number three, paying for too many subscriptions. I see it all the time when I talk to other agencies and business owners. They pay for a CRM, a separate email marketing platform, Jira, Zoom, project management, invoicing, SEO research, and they always admit to not using a whole bunch of them. In fact, one study found that 51% of SaaS licenses go underutilized or unused. It's like falling into the classic trap of paying for all these streaming services that you don't end up using. Now, while technology can undoubtedly enhance operations and over-reliance on tools can lead to increased costs, 
reduce productivity, and make your agency's tech stack too complicated. The key focus is to have quality tools that directly impact revenue generation and client satisfaction. Now, I promised examples in this video, so I'm going to walk you through the tech stack of one of our million dollar agency partners. This is from a husband and wife duo who specialize in marketing for law firms, but they don't actually do any in-house execution. Their whole tech stack is built around AI, automations, vendors, and BA services for fulfillment. So check this out. Their tech stack is broken into three buckets, free, core all-in-one solutions, and specific use cases. Every tool provides value either to the agency or client. When you look at the different pieces of their tech stack and how it comes together, it makes perfect sense here, right? Why do you have to pay for Zoom or Teams or other uh, pay for virtual meeting services when you've got Google Workspace doing everything for you? You've got documents you've got Meet, uh, you've got Gemini, you've got a whole bunch of other things. You've got Gmail, of course. A lot of the content that they create actually is done by ChatGPT itself. They create months and months worth of content just using really clever prompts that they've built through ChatGPT. And a lot of the automations come from Zapier, which is um, mostly free to use if you're an agency doing some minor operations uh, and automations for your clients. Then if you look at the core solutions, it's a bandasta providing things like the CRM, sales intelligence, vendor services, white label tools, and client facing software that a client can see to get their reporting and see what the agency's doing for them. So that's handling a lot of the legwork in terms of fulfillment. And then they've got tools for specific use cases. And this is where, you know, those core uh, tools uh, can't handle some of these specific functions that can only be provided by certain services or pieces of software. So Magic VA is the place where they find really, really good virtual assistants to handle a lot of the operations work and handle things like sending emails to clients. Toggle helps them with time tracking. And this husband and wife duo uses Loom for a lot of their client communications, right? So as agency owners, we tend to spend a lot of time with clients in meetings. What these guys have done is something really clever. Rather than necessarily getting clients to show up to meetings, they'll provide the end of month reporting highlights, um, major client milestones, and other important announcements. They'll send that all throughout Loom so that they don't need to necessarily be meeting with clients all the time because they're getting the updates via these short Loom clips. So this is a really great example of a very carefully calibrated tech stack that you can use and copy and paste for your agency. And lastly, profit killer number four, keeping bad clients. If you've never had an awful client, consider yourself lucky. Dealing with a bad client is like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. It's painful, it's unproductive. To help you spot these troublemakers early, I asked a seasoned agency owner with over 3 million in annual revenue for his red flags. And here's what he shared. They think they're the expert. These clients often dismiss your expertise and insist on their own way of doing things, even if it contradicts best practices. Now, this might be okay if you're fine being the order-taking agency focused solely on execution. However, if you position your agency as a strategic partner, be prepared, as these clients can be quick to point fingers when results don't meet their expectations and you'll be the one they blame. Ever-changing goals. Clients with constantly shifting expectations can be a nightmare to manage. One day they're focused on increasing brand awareness, the next day all they care about is conversion rates. This lack of focus can stretch your team thin and lead to scope creep. It's important to set clear, achievable goals from the outset and stick to them as closely as possible. And then there's demanding unrealistic results. Some clients expect overnight miracles. They want a comprehensive marketing campaign implemented within a week or expect to see a significant jump in their SEO rankings or page rankings in just 30 days. Whatever it may be, in your case, unrealistic expectations can lead to burnout and stress for you and your team and they set everyone up for disappointment. And then there's clients who just consume too much time. The worst clients often demand updates and revisions at all hours, including evenings and weekends. This intrusion can erode your work-life balance, taking time away from family, friends, and personal pursuits, the very freedom that many agencies actually start an agency for. So setting boundaries is crucial to protect your time and well-being. And sometimes the best decision you can make for your agency is to just walk away from a bad client. 
it might seem counterintuitive, especially if you're a new agency who's hustling to pay the bills. The thought of firing a client can feel as daunting as quitting your job in this economy. Easier said than done. But if a client is more of a headache than a profit center, it's a tough call you might have to make. Now, I understand that not every agency is in a position to make this choice easily. It requires a level of financial stability that not everyone has. If you're not in a position to do that just yet, my advice is to really hammer down on your sales efforts, get some deals lined up, to put yourself in a position where you're less reliant on a bad client. But that begs the question, how do you fire a bad client? So number one, communicate clearly and professionally. You need to tell the client that the relationship just isn't working out. This conversation should be handled professionally, even if the client has not always been. Number two, discuss next steps. Clearly outline the next steps, including when the partnership will end and how billing will be handled. Are you completing any projects before the contract ends? It's crucial to be as specific as you have in your statement of work. And number three, provide alternatives. To protect your reputation and minimize the risk of negative feedback, suggest alternatives. Recommend another agency that might be a better fit or any other course of action. This shows professionalism and a commitment to the client's best interests. I would generally recommend communicating all of this in an email first, mainly because an email allows both parties to read and respond at their convenience, giving the client the time to process the information before responding. This can be especially important if the relationship has been tense as it hopes to manage emotional responses. However, in some cases, a phone call or in-person meeting might be appropriate, especially if there is a need for a more personal touch to maintain a positive relationship or leave the door for future opportunities. Ultimately, the choice depends on the nature of your relationship with the client, the specific circumstances, and your professional judgment. And here's a quick example of what that could look like in an email. Subject, ending our business relationship. Dear, insert client's name, I want to take a moment to express my appreciation for the opportunity to work with you and your team. Our journey together has been a valuable experience and we have learned a lot from the projects we have tackled. However, after careful consideration and reflection on our mutual goals and expectations, we believe it is in the best interest of both parties to end our business relationship. We acknowledge that, despite our best efforts, we have not fully met your expectations and this partnership has not been as mutually beneficial as we had hoped. We take full accountability for our part in this outcome. This decision has not been made lightly as we are committed to providing the highest level of service and value to all our clients. To ensure a smooth transition, we will complete all outstanding work by X date and we will prorate the final invoice to cover only the work completed. We are also happy to recommend other providers who may better suit your needs moving forward. Please know that this decision is based on our desire to focus on clients where we can deliver the most value and create the best possible experiences. We genuinely wish you and your business continued success and are grateful for all the time we've spent working together. Thank you once again for the opportunity and please do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or require further clarification during this transition. Warm regards. So by handling the situation with professionalism and clarity, you not only protect your agency's reputation, but also leave the door open for potential future collaborations under better circumstances. Remember, the goal is to build a client roster that respects your work, aligns with your values, and contributes positively to your agency's growth. And there you have it the silent killers of agency profitability. By understanding these common challenges and implementing the strategies we've discussed, you can position your agency for sustained growth and profitability. Remember, it's not just about avoiding mistakes, but actively taking steps to optimize your business. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. And don't forget to drop a comment if you want me to share that free interactive disqualification checklist.